So is it worth it to get ChatGPT Plus? I'll go through some of the features here and how to use it. We'll first start out by talking about what is offered by the ChatGPT Plus subscription. And there are a few features and Plus is currently $20 a month. Here's what you get with the free access, which is access now to the GPT 3.5 model. You'll notice that this got faster, much faster than what it was before. But on top of this, you get GPT-4, their most capable model, chat with images, voice, and creating images. You can build and use custom GPTs and everything else that the free includes. Now, one of the biggest things that's not labeled on here that we'll review is the fact that you're capped or limited to the amount of messages you can write in a three hour period. And ChatGPT Plus was released to us nearly a year ago now. One other thing I wanna to add to this plus is the fact that you get general access to ChatGPT even during peak times. Occasionally, not as much anymore, you'll get throttled by the free version, not letting you sign in because there are way too many people online using ChatGPT. Anyways, let's move on to checking out ChatGPT Plus and using its features. Here's what the screen looks like whenever you load ChatGPT Plus. You'll notice a very similar screen, a welcome screen by the chatbot where you can enter in your messages, but you'll also notice a new icon, a few recommendations, and then on the left-hand side, some new buttons, including explore. And we'll talk about these few features in a moment, but one of the biggest differences is something to notice up top. If we click down on this, we'll notice two varying models. The GPT 3.5 says great for everyday tasks and GPT 4 with DALE, browsing and analysis. The limit is 40 messages per three hours. Now this is the limit that I was talking about before. It's very important to understand that you can only use the more powerful updated model with a limit of 40 different messages in three hours. Now, here's something interesting. That 40 per three hours isn't always the case. Now you aren't always limited to this number. It's more like a variable. Sometimes it goes up and down and that's based on the current load of their servers and systems. Meaning sometimes I can get away with doing much more than 40 messages per the three hour period. Other times I can't, but do understand that this is a important consideration to take. Are you going to be using the GPT-4 model extensively? Well, if you do, you might be better off not paying the 20 dollars per month and instead going to a token subscription using their API. We'll talk about this in a few moments, but let's continue on understanding the features and benefits here of ChatGPT Plus because there are quite a few. Let's start out with a prompt in ChatGPT 3.5 so we, so we can do a comparison. So if we do why are ChatGPT's resources limited, let's see if it can explain that to us and we can see how quickly it responds back to us in the ChatGPT 3.5 model, quite quick, and it gives us some great information such as technical constraints, cost, accessibility, and scalability. And then gives us a synopsis at the very end of the four things that it spit out to us. Now let's try this with the plus model, ChatGPT 4. All right, if I hit new chat here, that's going to create a whole new chat for me. I can now put the same prompt in, press enter, and what you'll notice right off the bat is that ChatGPT 4 is much slower than the 3.5 Turbo Edition. I do believe they're going to come out with a Turbo Edition with ChatGPT4 in the future, but understand that it is slower. So in some cases, you may or may not want to use 3.5 over the 4 model because it can get you answers quicker, meaning you can reiterate over things in a much faster manner. And if you need something like that, it's actually nicer to use 3.5. I find myself using 3.5 just as much as four for some of my tasks. Anyways, with that being said, we do get a more verbose and thoughtful response from the four model. Notice it says computational resources, cost management, quality control, preventing misuse, technical stability, data management, ethical considerations, and of course our summary at the end. You'll notice at the bottom, you can actually regenerate things like or dislike, output, and even copy, which is one of my favorite features down here at the bottom. Because yes, you could copy code, but it was really hard to copy the output from the chatbot before when it comes to everyday language. Now you can simply click the button and paste it into whatever you need. It's also nice to be able to paste it and then ask specific questions when need be. Make sure that you notice those, it's a nice feature. Anyways, what I've noticed between the two models you do get an improvement in speed with 3.5, 
but there's a considerable change in the quality of code with ChatGPT 4 because it uses better context clues with the newer model. We could do something like create a basic tic-tac-toe program in some language we'll do in C++. We'll do that to both four, first starting with ChatGPT 4, which you get with the plus edition. All right, it's off and it's writing out the code for us now. Again, it's going to be slower than that 3.5 model. One thing I definitely want people to understand when getting the plus because if speed is important to you, it might be a big consideration to not actually get the plus edition, at least for now. But if you want a better understanding model and the ability to continue with output, plus might be great for you. Anyways, let's look over this code real quick. They create a board, check if there's a winner, check if the board is full, and here's the main function which it keeps track of things. Let's ask 3.5 the same question and see the difference. Again, notice it's much quicker here. It takes much less time to make the code. All right, this time we have display board, which we had another one, check for a win, check draw, and a main function. Now the form model does seem a little more concise. I can tell in the main function there's, there's less code and more understandable functions as you go through. The syntax is a little bit better. As you can tell here, there's a little bit of a jumble going on of information, especially when you look at this vector of vectors that are storing characters. I don't like how they approach that. Instead here, they specify a typical board with, with a square size, which since we understand the layout of tic-tac-toe, it's much better to do it this way instead of the vector of vectors, at least in my opinion. I believe that overcomplicates things. Anyways, you, now you can kind of tell the difference between ChatGPT 3.5 and ChatGPT 4, which you get with the plus edition. It is a little more concise and thoughtful, especially when it comes to writing code. Now, I do want to talk about some of the limitations here. One thing that I've done to test ChatGPT 4 is to test out how many tokens we can output, or basically tokens are attached to words. So if I do something like, give me 120 Linux commands, please don't repeat. Let's see what it can do for me. And you'll notice after a while, a limit will be reached. Here it got to 118 out of the 120 that I wanted. So we're gonna check what limit that looks like. It's really a limit of how many words or characters you're gonna get. But the nice part is you can just continue generating things and it will keep going from where it was last at without actually creating a new message or anything like that. So that's fantastic news as well. This is a great feature, especially when you're conversing or asking for a lot of information. But since we don't really have a clear understanding of limits right now, I'm going to throw this into their tokenizer so we can understand how many characters and tokens this prompt would have taken with the 3.5 and the four models. Anyways, it looks like around 1,500 tokens and 5,700 characters of output were made before the model decided to stop giving information and before having to hit continue. So we can expect the token amount to, let's say, roughly be somewhere between 1,600 and maybe 2,000 tokens, roughly in that ballpark of how much information you get back from the model before it decides to stop giving you information. There is some type of a limit here. Let's maybe call it between 5,500 and 6,000 characters. I do want you to be aware of this limit. And if it is something that you're worried about, you can check out some other models as well as the ability to use a larger token limit, but you have to use the API. What I'm showing you here is the limits for the API. There's two ways of using the API. That's writing your own code and not using ChatGPT Plus, or you can actually use their playground to accomplish the same thing. But you will be charged per thousand tokens and you may or may not want to use the Plus model. Just looking at a couple of these, we'll look at the Turbo model. You have 40,000 tokens per minute as a limit. Okay, now understanding those limitations, let's move on to some exciting things that ChatGPT Plus gives us, which might make it well worth the $20 per month fee. But if you haven't already, make sure to smash that like button for me so others can decide whether or not it's worth it for them to buy ChatGPT Plus. If we move over to the left, in ChatGPT Plus, you'll notice an Explore button. This is where you can actually see varying different things they call GPTs. These are your own custom GPTs, which are really just creating your own custom version of ChatGPT. These GPTs can combine things like instructions and extra information like your own data sets or any combination of skills that you might want the chatbot to be specialized in. I'll quickly go through how to create a GPT, but there's already some offered directly by OpenAI, which are fantastic. DALE, Data Analyst, and Web Browser. Those are fantastic ones. I've used all three 
And I gotta say, Data Analyst is pretty good if you have some sort of a spreadsheet. You can actually attach it by clicking this button right here, such as a spreadsheet, and then you can ask questions about that spreadsheet. For example, I'm going to throw in some information from my YouTube channel. Then I'm going to query the message data analyst about some information. What is the best performing video when it comes to views for the month? And we'll see if it comes back with the right answer. Now, what's interesting about data analyst with the plus subscription is it first tells you what steps it's going to take in order to analyze your file that you've uploaded. And then it talks about how it analyzes that file specifically. So it says that it's going to look at things like video title and video published time views and other metrics for video performance. Now that I couldn't find what I wanted, it's because I wasn't specific enough. I want for the month of December, 2023. Let's see if it can give me an answer. This is what's wonderful about the data analyst. It actually works back and forth with you, analyzing the data and correcting your input and explaining it logically how it's going to analyze things. That way you can figure out if it's about to mess things up and if its thought process actually makes sense. The best performing video in terms of December 2023 is Pop! OS Cosmic Desktop built on Rust. When it was published on December 19th, 2023, it generated 14,500 views, which is correct and is fantastic because this allows you to analyze all sorts of data that's not only tied to just copying, pasting information into ChatGPT, but instead pulling files in and analyzing those files. These could be other types of files as well. It's not just limited to Excel spreadsheets, and that's why these GPTs are so powerful. Up at the top, you'll always be able to find varying different options like about, copy a link, share the chat, or a new chat. Share chat's nice because if you wanna share a chat with maybe a team member, or you just wanna give it to somebody, else so they can analyze the information. This is across the board available. You can simply copy the link and give it to somebody. Now let's check out Dolly. Now this is an improvement from the last time that I did a video like this. Now for the $20 per month subscription, you also get an image generation model because overall it does a really good job and lets you render images fairly quick, but is definitely a neat feature to come with the ChatGPT Plus subscription. So let's try it out. First, I'm going to Put something in that's fairly vague, but I think it gets a point across. I'm gonna put make a wonderful landscape full of snow and mountains that has a serene feel with a magical backdrop, like another planet and stars. Let's see what it comes up with. Once Dolly starts, it's gonna say creating image, and you can actually see the current progress by looking at the icon and seeing how much of a ring it has filled in. It's about halfway done right now. It does take a little while. This took me about 30 seconds, which isn't all bad. You can put your thoughts in if you want, but you get two image renditions, both on the left and right, and you can specify whether you liked one or not, and then you can download each image individually. I like the one on the right-hand side a little more. It's got a little more color. Looks like the sun is shining in a little bit better. There's a huge mountainscape in the background. Let's click on this one to get a better view. In order to download things, you can click this button up here on the right-hand side, and that will download it to your computer. So you have a full resolution image, and or you can click this one on the right, what it actually prompted, how it improved your own prompt in order to make this image. And now you can take this prompt, copy it, and then go back and maybe change something. For example, I'm gonna put lava here and then regenerate this to see what it looks like instead. Why I like this option is because Dolly likes to take your image and fill in more context clues for itself so it can make a better prediction on what you want. Sometimes that's wrong. So it's fantastic to see how it thought it should generate the image, and then it gives you the option to easily change that image up. Look at that on the right-hand side. Now that's looking pretty cool, quite an awesome looking landscape, very hot and cold. So those are two models that are given to you, but it's not my favorite. My favorite is the web browser. No longer are the days where the model is just limited to the model data it was trained on. We had this issue with 3.5 where it was trained up to, I believe it was like 2021 with data. So anything new, it didn't really have a notion or understanding of. With the plus subscription, you get access to these GPTs and one of them is called web browser, which searches the web for results as well. So for example, what's some of the latest news in Linux? Let's see it browse the web for us and see if it can give me correct news 
and to tell what this looks like. It does do a few things for you. One, it tells you where it's searching. It also cites things, which is nice. And three, it allows you to gather new data and revise information as needed. Now it's giving me quite a lot. I can always stop it from generating things, but I'm just gonna look at the first few things. So kernel 6.7 release, great. Gnome 46 desktop environment, yep, that's new. Linux 21.3, so yep, looks like it's giving me some accurate data. And then it gives me a brief summary on things that are happening in the Linux world. Fantastic news for those of you who want to work on data that is current. You can now have ChatGPT search the web if you're using the Plus Edition. Now I know we went through a lot of things and there are a lot of options, including creating your own GPTs. We can create a GPT and this actually walks you through things. Let's say I wanna build a GPT, which is a parrot that talks back to me. I'm just gonna tell the GPT builder, I want a parrot that talks back to me and says funny things occasionally. Let's see if we can do this. The process is not the fastest, but you can imagine the very specific scenarios in which you can use. It suggests a name called Chatty Parrot. Sounds good to me. So I'm just gonna say, sounds good. And it's getting things ready here on the right-hand side. It says a playful parrot that chats and makes witty humorous remarks, fantastic. And it even gives suggestions on what you can ask this new GPT that we're creating. Now it's actually generating a profile picture for us. This is another thing that you can definitely use in the Plus model. This profile picture looks great, let's use it. Is there any topics it should focus on or avoid? No, all is good. So we're gonna let it freestyle as much as it wants. Any interactive style says, should it ask for clarification directly? Make an educated guess based on the context. I'm just gonna say educated guesses are fine. So the GPT is getting smarter and smarter as it goes and is being built. I'm gonna say I want it to be all three of these, dramatic, sarcastic, and cheerful. Okay, and it says what's ready now, it can be interacted with in the playground. So let's start with this one right here. Parrot, what do you think about cats? And there you go. We've configured our own GPT and we can keep interacting with this. Anyways, you can also share these with everyone, anyone with the link or with yourself. That way you understand what these GPTs are and how they can be beneficial. This is a silly example, but now you can understand how these GPTs are built and how you could potentially use them with the Plus Edition. Now let's summarize and talk about the pros and the cons of the ChatGPT Plus subscription. One pro is with the ChatGPT 4 model, you'll get more accurate results, plainly because it's a smarter model. Two, one con is that the ChatGPT 4 compared to 3 Turbo, well, 4 is slower. So you don't gain much of a benefit as far as speed goes, getting plus, at least as of right now. Another plus is you get to create your own GPTs using the new model framework, which allows you to create and save basically roles that you have for your own AI model or an easy way to create tasks which are repetitive and you can even share them with multiple people. They can be quite powerful. Another pro is the fact that you can now use and create images with the Plus subscription and ChatGPT, which makes it much more powerful and you get more use out of your subscription. Another con is the fact that you have a 40 message limit on using the ChatGPT4 model per every three hours. Another con here is even with the latest model, you don't get an exorbitant amount of token output. I would like the ability to get much more output instead of having to hit continue in order for the model to keep working on the task at hand. A few more pros though is seven, now you have web access with the chatbot models, which makes them much more powerful with the ability to get and access current data or events. And finally, number eight is the ability to analyze. And specifically, I'm talking files, spreadsheets, etc. You can imagine how great that is for those of us who need to investigate some sort of information and it's already available in some sort of specific format. Now you don't need to copy and paste things over to ChatGPT and make sure that it can understand and analyze those things. Instead, you have the ability to simply hit the upload button at the bottom and then ask questions on that particular file or spreadsheet. Anyways, these are some of the main pros and cons 
of using the subscription model called ChatGPT+. Let me know if you plan on using it in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. Are there any things that I missed or ways that you like to use ChatGPT and would like others to know about? $20 a month can be pretty steep. It's been well worth it for me using Plus over the last few months. Hopefully this allows you to decide whether or not you really need ChatGPT Plus and you got to see the back end of ChatGPT Plus and the ChatGPT4 model that you get access to, including the custom GPTs. Let me know if you now plan on getting it. Make sure to subscribe below. Don't forget to hit that like button. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.